So thank you very much, Brian, and Debbie, and Richard, and all of you all for uh, letting us come and speak to you. We always enjoy coming to speak to this, this realtor group because, um, as I was saying uh, before the meeting started, you guys are such a critical part of what we do uh, in partnership with your listings and the things that uh, we can put on our website um, and always having your support. So it's, it's always a pleasure to speak to this group, and um, I'm excited to say that we have some uh, great things going on in Bay County, and I'd like to give you an update on where we are with some of the recent announcements and um, what we anticipate for the rest of the year, and also um, talk about some of the projects that have already been announced and where they are with their hiring process and implementation of their projects. So we were so fortunate right before the lockdown of COVID-19 at the beginning of March uh, we were, we've been working with Suzuki Motor Marine. Uh, their U.S. operation is out of California, uh, but we were working directly with the executive team out of um, Japan. And uh, we were able to work with um, several local landowners and put together three different parcels of property at the end of um, Frankfurt Avenue, uh, the former Grover Davis operation, if you guys are familiar with that property right on the water. And um, Suzuki purchased um, uh, almost 20 acres of property at a, at a value of $12 million to put their U.S. Um, integration center here. And what they'll be doing is really similar to what um, Mercury Motors is doing here in Bay County in that they will, um, you see an artist rendering of the, the site there. Um, they are building docks and will have access to the water so in their main facility, and there'll be several buildings out there, they, um, I'm good. they um, will be um, doing research and development on the motors there and then putting motors on boats and testing them in the, in the bay right behind there. Uh, we anticipate them to create uh, really more than 30 jobs within the next five years, uh, and they're high-paying jobs because they'll be engineers and um, technicians. And a total investment once the buildings uh, are up with about a $25 million <clears throat> investment. And uh, this project is substantial because it'll put us on the international map. There's always already been several uh, news articles that have been published in international marine uh, magazines. And um, once we're able to host gatherings again, the Japanese executive delegation um, from Tokyo will be coming here so that we can do a big groundbreaking ceremony and toast each other with sake and uh, officially welcome Suzuki to town. So very, very excited to have this international company come to Bay County. Um, if you track um, what's going on with the Triumph Gulf Coast monies and the grants that are available through that program, uh, as a reminder, this is um, BP settlement funding that um, is allocated to the eight most affected counties, which Bay County uh, is one. Uh, we were awarded $4.8 million grant uh, from Triumph Gulf Coast last week uh, in partnership with the Airport Authority and Parker McClellan and his team. Uh, we submitted a grant in support of Project Gator. Uh, I'm not at liberty to reveal the name of the company yet because we're still working through uh, final details of our project agreements with them. Uh, but this is an aviation-related company that um, needs to have access to our 10,000-foot runway. They have plans to build a double bay narrow body hangar uh, that will accommodate um, uh, narrow, narrow body uh, planes of various sizes. Um, they do business with um, Delta Southwest, um, some of the cargo carriers, and um, they will create 96 new jobs at an average wage of 115% of the Bay County average. Uh, it is a maintenance, repair, and overhaul operation, and the total capital investment um, is uh, right at 26 million. And we're also working with Space Florida on this, on this project. Um, they're a quasi-governmental entity that helps us put together the financial components of these projects. We've been working with this company almost a year now, and uh, we're finally to a point where we can start finalizing project agreements. Uh, to us, this is a um, this will be a game changer, and hopefully, the first piece of the puzzle that will enhance our recruiting efforts at the airport. Uh, once we see the this hangar under construction, um, we hope that it will um, be a catalyst for other companies to build at our wonderful airport. 
Um, this is the first step of a longer term vision to create an aviation center of excellence. As you know, our airport is the newest airport that's been built in the United States and we have 3,000 acres around it to develop for economic development projects, such as Project Gator. So the, uh, the airport really is our future of development, and we think that this will be the first domino that hopefully will fall that will lead to other recruitment efforts. Um, later on in this presentation, I'll show you an overview aerial of the airport properties and show you our vision for uh, where we wanna put some of these projects in creating our aviation center of excellence. Also, this past year, we were able to recruit uh, Clark & Son Incorporated. Uh, this company is a um, cabinet manufacturer, high-end kitchen cabinet manufacturer. They just built a large factory in Merida, Mexico, our sister city, um, and are utilizing our sister port, the Port of Progreso. Their facility in Merida is 750,000 square feet, and um, they have committed to increase container traffic at our port to four to 500 containers a month. Um, they've already uh, opened the factory in Merida, uh, had some pauses and delays due to COVID, but it is fully operational now and they are ramping up uh, their container traffic at our port. They're not quite at that volume yet, but we've definitely seen an increase in container traffic as a result of Clark and Son. Uh, and we were able to put them in the new expansion space in our uh, and, uh, in our distribution center at the Intermodal Distribution Center off Highway 231 that the Port Authority owns. If you look at this picture, um, it's, and you can see that the building was added onto, it's that back half. Um, and if you go out there now, I was out there last week, they've got a new general manager that they just brought down, and uh, it's already racked, and they're starting to receive product, and we are starting to talk to them about expansion opportunities in our Intermodal Distribution Center. Uh, they initially committed to 50 jobs and 8 million capital investment, and this is their U.S. distribution headquarter operation. So we do anticipate this company continuing to grow. Here's the uh, picture that I promised you. This is Florida State University, Panama City student housing. Uh, you know, I mentioned Project Gator be, being a game changer. Let me tell you, for Bay County and for everything, obviously, we're working on, the fact that we are now building student housing that will be available for not only Florida State students, but also Gulf Coast students is absolutely a game changer. Uh, education and workforce is a critical component of our recruitment package. We can never get to the table to negotiate an incentives deal if we can't prove that we can answer the workforce question. And the fact that we will now have student housing is um, a great recruitment tool for us to get students here. Um, this facility is right on the water. It'll have a swimming pool and an outdoor theater area. Uh, if you've been down uh, this way lately, uh, my office is right down the street from where this is gonna be built. Uh, you'll see that they've already started clearing the ground. So the construction is gonna be beginning um, very soon. And it's um, planned to start uh, opening in August of 20. 21. So uh, this is real. It's something that the leadership in um, Bay County has been working toward for a uh, long time since before I came here. And it's so wonderful to see these dreams finally coming to fruition. Uh, as you look over the last five year period, um, these are some of the projects that we've been able to announce. There's a good mix of existing businesses that have been able to expand and then some new companies uh, that have come into our area. So you see we've had quite a bit of activity and I'll, I'll go further into some of these and give you an update on where they are. Looking at our five-year report card, we've had nine new project announcements with almost 2,000 jobs, 233 million capital investment from these commitments and the economic development projects. And according to Florida Department of Economic Opportunity, uh, with this activity, that means uh, almost 8.5 increase in the average wage. And that's important for us. Those are key indicators. We also track per capita income. And according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, we've had a 15.6 increase in per capita income. So what that tells you is, is as we focus on our local economy, you know, we, we always wanna look for opportunities to increase average wage and per capita income. So right now the average wage in Bay County is 38,700. 
And the projects that we look to incentivize have to pay at least 115% of that 38,700 average wage um, so that we can make sure that we are always searching for ways to bring wealth and capital into our community. And if those two indicators uh, are on the increase, that means that we're doing a good job in enhancing the local economy through the efforts that we're bringing forward. One of the things we're also proud of is that, um, you know, I feel that uh, over the past five, seven years, um, we've, we've brought a level of credibil credibility to this organization. Uh, and by doing so, we've been able to increase our Bay EDA investors uh, by almost 50%. Um, so, you know, that shows you that we've got great investors that believe in the efforts uh, because we are seeing successes and, um, and our investment continues to grow in Bay County. Let me update you on a couple of the projects that we brought to town. Uh, many of you may remember, some of you were even involved in the ACMT Incorporated project. This is a large aviation manufacturer. Uh, they service accounts with um, GKN and, and Pratt and & Whitney. Uh, they bought the old Honeywell building in Lynn Haven. I know, Brian, you remember that building well. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, the president and CEO of the company, the owner of the company, uh, when he saw that building, they, for some reason, he just fell in love, of, love with it. And I tried to convince him not to buy it because it was in horrible shape and had been vacant for so long. I mean, they had people living in there doing drug deals and stuff. I mean, it was a scary place. But he had a vision, and that's what he had done in his headquarter operation in Connecticut, is that he bought old uh, manufacturing facilities and turned them around. Um, I couldn't see his vision at the time, but I see what he has done. And you see, these are current pictures of the facility. And he's just really turned this building into something amazing. And um, they just this week, they have um, received $7 million worth of equipment that is going into uh, this facility. They, um, I actually met with a general manager and took him out to Haney yesterday so he could see our uh, FAA approved A&P program. Uh, they want to start plugging in to Haney and uh, looking to offer internships to the students out there and, and begin to hire the students that, that have A&P uh, certifications. So that's a win-win in our community that we have um, those services to support ACMT. Uh, they, um, we're hoping to have a big uh, ceremony in December where we're going to cut the ribbon and have uh, the ACMT officials here uh, from Connecticut and have a, a big ceremony. And then um, working with Career Source, we're starting to put together a hiring schedule. Uh, so certainly right at the end of the year, before the end of the year, they'll be um, producing parts out of this factory. And um, they have great plans for the Florida operations. And we feel like once we get them up and running, they're going to continue to grow here. This is uh, Air Temp of America. This is the Mexican automotive company that um, we recruited that bought the former Boyd Brothers property on 98. Um, they've had a little bit slower start um, for several reasons, but the COVID virus really hurt them. Uh, their main customer that's gonna be serviced out of the Panama City facility is Volkswagen in Tennessee. And um, Volkswagen halted some of their production, so that has delayed this project. However, um, Mr. George Habib, who owns this company, uh, and his team were in town a couple weeks ago, and um, we're already talking to a contractor to, to rebuild one of those buildings that was basically destroyed uh, in the hurricane. And um, they're, they're looking to start some distribution out of that facility while they wait for the manufacturing to kick back in. It is moving forward, it's just a little slower than we would like. Uh, they've committed to create 50 new jobs in that facility with a capital investment of uh, right around $6 million. Let me talk about some of the current active projects that we're working on. I'm proud to say that um, our pipeline is still active. It's still pretty full. We've got about 21 projects that we're working and they're in various stages of negotiation and, and development. Uh, Project Purple is an aviation related company that's looking at a site in Venture Crossings. Uh, this is uh, an international company that will create 115 jobs and it's about an 8 million capital investment and um, 
hopefully this is one it's uh it's really looking good and it's one that hopefully we'll be able to push across the finish line and um announce before the end of the year okay um project gator i've already told you about uh, that one hopefully we'll get to our term sheet with the triumph board within the next couple of uh well within the next month and we're pushing to be able to announce that later this fall so we can help celebrate them coming to bay county project spectrum is a large european advanced manufacturing company that we've continued to make cuts on um, we actually had a really cool uh, virtual site visit with them a couple of weeks ago and um, you know they're they're interested in some existing facilities that we have in Bay County. And as soon as things open up and they can travel, they certainly are going to come here for a site visit. Uh, Project Venus. This is that large maintenance repair and overhaul company in uh, Eastern Europe that we've been talking to. Uh, that project has effectively been put on hold until the end of September, first of October. Uh, we've got a scheduled Zoom meeting with the president of that company. Uh, to re-engage in conversations. Uh, so hopefully international travel will be opening up soon um, so we can move forward with that project. 250 jobs and 50 million capital investment. They too will need to build a hangar uh, at the airport. Project Fry is a local defense contractor that's looking to expand. Um, and we've been working with their, develop their developer on trying to find the perfect piece of property for them. They will be uh, doing a build the suit opportunity. Project Domino, this is a project lead that we received from Florida's Great Northwest, which is our regional um, partner. It is aviation related. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a big one too. It's 400 new jobs, 100 million capital investment. Um, this is a domestic project, so we hope to continue to make cuts so we can get it a site visit uh, in the coming weeks. Project Emerald, another Florida Great Northwest lead. Uh, they are, they're actually coming for a site visit next week. Uh, we be, will be touring sites at the airport and in venture crossings. Uh, this is 300 jobs. Um, I think that 10 million capital investment is a little low. We'll get a better understanding of that when they come to visit and we can ask those questions uh, next week. But for 300 aviation jobs, I, I feel that the capital investment is definitely going to be larger than that. Project Amigo is um, another company that we're talking to that can possibly locate in the Intermodal Distribution Center. It will be a distribution project that utilizes the port. 85 new jobs, uh, 200,000 square foot facility will be built uh, with 25 million capital investment. Uh, the president of that company will be coming in town later in September to help us map out a plan of, of what his needs will be in support of that project. And then the monster project lead we got from Enterprise Florida just last week um, is automotive related, Project Lion. It would be 747 jobs with 70 million CapEx. Uh, we have pitched a couple sites for this, um, but uh, the main site that we've pitched is our certified site at the Intermodal Distribution Center. This is in the very early stages, so um, we don't anticipate uh, getting uh, feedback from them for at least another week and hope that we can make it at least the first cut on that project. Let me talk about the projects that we're working on at the airport. Um, You'll see that the sites in red, uh, those are shovel-ready sites. The airport authority has actually um, started investing some money to start getting the infrastructure in place so that we can uh, have those sites ready to take planes from the runway to those sites for the M MRO operations so that planes can be worked on. If you look at that 14-acre site, um, that's where Project Gator is going. Uh, we're talking to several different MROs um, that are possibly looking to go in that blue space, which is what we call the infield. And uh, as part of our aviation long-term strategy, once we start getting traction with these companies locating at the airport, our long-term strategy is um, to work with the Triumph Gulf Coast and Haney Technical School to move our um, airframe and power plant, our FAA approved A&P program, at, uh, out to the airport so that we will have the students being trained where they're going to be potentially working and it would give our aviation companies access to the students um, so that they can uh, do internships and work in a real, real work environment. Um, so I'm excited about our strategy uh, at, for our Aviation Center of Excellence at the airport. Uh, now that we hopefully will be having one hangar 
uh, under construction that's just going to continue to give us traction for our long-term strategy and, and development at the airport. This is, is uh, an overview aerial of our intermodal distribution center that's owned by the port off of Highway 231. Also at last week's Triumph board meeting, uh, the port <clears throat> received a $3 million uh, green light for a grant to help support our continued uh, and completion of infrastructure at this site. You see on this slide, there's, we have a 54 acre certified site. It's a Gulf Power certified site that has rail access to the port. It's very rare that you can find a site this big that has rail access to an international port. Um, part of the monies uh, of the $3 million grant that was received from Triumph Gulf Coast will be to um, double the size of that certified site. So we'll have almost 100, right at 100 acres um, to market. This, this is actually the site that we pitched for that monster project, Project Lion, automotive related. Um, we'll also be able to use that money to build uh, roads and complete the infrastructure on um, the, the site that's across the street from FedEx. Some of that's pretty wet and um, you know, we've got to get it cleared and, and get it, the infrastructure ready uh, because in this day and time, companies want a certified site. They want a quote unquote shovel ready site. Uh, when they make decisions, they don't have time for infrastructure to be built. They want to be able to put a building out there as quickly as possible. So with this $3 billion Triumph grant and some matching funds from the, Air, from the Port Authority, uh, we're going to be able to get these sites even further developed, which will make them a lot more marketable. Um, also last year, this past year, uh, because we were filling up all of our vacant uh, buildings, St. Joe Company agreed to work with the community and, and they built a 60,000 square foot speculative building uh, right next to the GKN building in Venture Crossings. We've had a, uh, it's a flex building, which means that you can um, divide the space into 10 di different spaces or a company could take the whole building. So um, that's very marketable to have flex space like that. We've had a lot of companies come out and, and look at that and it's just a matter of time before we get the right tenants in there. That's another pictures of the spec building. Also, a little bit smaller uh, development, but it's something that, uh, that it gives us inventory to market as um, St. Joe Company is building two smaller warehouses in Cedar Grove. And I believe one of them's already spoken for, but again, it just gives us inventory in our, in our portfolio to market. Year to date, uh, if you look at some of the announcements we've had, um, we announced a large international boarding school uh, it was weird. We don't normally work projects like that, but um, this company approached us and, and we helped connect them to the right people and they found some property um, in North Bay County that they have purchased. So they've invested the money and um, they're working with Joe Sorcy at Florida Architects and William Harrison, they've hired him as kind of a project manager. And uh, they're going to be building an international boarding school there that is marine centric. So um, that project has slowed down, it's still going forward, but because of limitations with international travel, uh, the executive team has not been able to come here. Uh, but we did have uh, email correspondence with them yesterday and the project is definitely moving forward. I mentioned Clark and Son, the large distribution center, Suzuki obviously, um, and they, they will begin construction within the next two to three months out there. Uh, we had three existing industry projects that we worked uh, before everything locked down. We were having uh, almost weekly prospect meetings and visits here to Bay County. Uh, 30 requests for proposals that were completed domestically and internationally. And we were doing, uh, as Debbie mentioned earlier, we were, we, were, we were doing a lot of trade shows and recruitment missions all over the world and going out and meeting with companies showcasing Bay County and the assets that we have. So even during the times of COVID, we've had to get creative and do a lot of um, digital marketing and virtual meetings. Uh, it's been a challenge, but um, thankfully our business is still moving forward. We're gonna be moving forward with hopefully a couple of announcements before the end of the year and um, we're just excited to be able to continue to showcase Bay County. And uh, we just think that uh, 
you know, despite some of these obstacles and setbacks, we're going to continue to see great things happen here.